when it comes to retouching and uh, you know cleaning up photographs or moving elements and photos and duplicating elements and photos it all started with the clone stamp tool then we got these great content aware tools such as a content aware fill and content aware patch the healing brush spot healing brush but when it comes down to the good old workhorse nothing beats the clone stamp in fact you know when the content aware tools if they don't work or they just leave some funny areas you need to clean up the clone stamp is the tool that you're going to go to um, it's it's just a good old workhorse so let's go and have a look at the clone stamp tool here and we're just going to select it and there's our clone stamp and what I'm going to do is a couple of things I'm going to show you how this thing works and then I'm going to show you some of the available options with it so essentially what the clone stamp tool does is if we hit down the alt key and that would be option on Mac we get this little target we click on the target to sample the area we want to paint with now of course we can change the size of the brush if we want to paint a larger area and you'll see an overlay there is just showing us what's on there so I can paint there and essentially what I'm doing is I've filled this brush with this area and I'm just painting see that so we've got an offset of this much so wherever I move offset by that I'm gonna be just painting what's under that crosshair see that and that's how the clone stamp essentially works so if I resample it from here and then pull it further away now I've got a further offset and I'm just painting now whatever was on there now let me just undo that a couple of times we're gonna go back to where we were and uh, let me just hit the file revert and we'll just go back to the original file there we go now I'm gonna create a new layer and if we create a new layer one of the cool things that happens is we can actually change from sample from current layer to all layers and now we can do exactly the same thing we were doing but now we can do it on individual layers so we can sample these areas and just paint them wherever we want and then what happens now is they paint onto a separate layer and the advantage of that is that we can turn these off if we don't like them we can select them and erase them we can mask them we can get rid of these so I'm just gonna make a selection around all of these hit the delete key and we're just gonna reset that so let's have a look at the uh, mask panel so here's the mask panel right now and we're seeing these overlays if I turn this off what will happen now is when I hit the option key to load this up you won't see that now um, let me make sure I grab my clone stamp tool there we go and make sure nothing is selected so now if I hit that you don't see that overlay it'll just begin to paint now so sometimes you want that overlay off if you're working on very very detailed work and you just need to see very very clearly without that overlay when you're in a really really tight area um, most of the time you'll turn that overlay on though so let's actually have a look at some real world work here so we're going to clean up some of this one of the things that the clone stamp is used a lot for is for getting rid of distractions in the photo so what we're doing here is we're just trying to just minimize some of these distractions here and just clean it up a little bit simplify the photo so sometimes you use it for add things but most of the time you use it just to take things away and so how does it work well essentially what it does is we're going to be sampling an area um, that's going to be very similar to the area we want to replace such as there and then I'm going to go over there and just gently dab and then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go and grab a sample from another area and, uh, and and so on and so forth we just keep going like this and we're looking for areas that look good and similar to what we want and uh, the reason I'll show you in a second why we're dabbing out like this instead of just painting you know these huge big sweeping uh, sweeping areas I'll show you why okay sometimes it's a little hard to actually do this and talk at the same time so I apologize if I sound a little bit distracted so I'm just kind of doing a little bit of cleanup so what happens is if I say I, I grab this sample here and then I start painting here you'll see this repeating pattern there of those three so that's why I'm always constantly resampling in different areas to try and get rid of that so we're not doing it so let me just undo that because I got very blotchy there and that was something we were not trying to do all right so let's just go back in here and we can just kind of clean this up let's go in here with his less dots 
And we just sometimes you can just kind of work your way into things. Sometimes you can start there, grab a smaller brush here, and then just go down and clean up those edges. And this is another way I'll do it sometimes. Just kind of clean up the edges like this, dragging through them. And let's grab this option here. So when we're doing this, we are going to get some repeating patterns. And we're going to get some blotchiness by doing it this way. But then once we've done that, we can go in and just touch it up. And this is a way I like to work a lot. So you just kind of clean up. It's almost like, you know, when you're painting or, you know, coloring in, you draw around the lines and then you go and then you fill it up. So we're just kind of cleaning that up a little bit. Well, let's see what we've done so far. If we look at this before and we look at it after, we can see what we've done to our image. And we go down there, we can see those are the areas we've been cloning. Now, when you look at it now, and I go before and after, you can see these blotchy areas. They're very, very obvious. But for the person who's not looking at the areas you've worked in, they're not going to see those. These areas are probably over here uh, are a little much. So I actually probably would grab a larger brush here and just go in and actually dab that up and clean it up a little bit. There we go. To make that a little less obvious. And sometimes when you get these edges, you want to find an edge that has a transitional color, like there. And you can kind of um, work those in. And obviously, I wanted to get rid of that spot. All right, so let's look at some of the other options in here. So you can see, you know, right now we've got an offset. And the offset is whatever I clone. So if I select it here, and notice there's the offset. And as soon as I start painting, that's the offset that we've got there. But you can change this manually by dragging. And, um, and of course, when you roll over there, you can actually see how much your offset is. To get rid of that offset, just simply hit the Option key and click, and that'll clear it. And actually, let me get rid of that. There we go. So you can see what you're doing. You can change that offset if you want. The other thing is you'll notice that there's different sources up here. Now, these different sources are for when you're doing things like working with video. Say, for example, I go here and I sampled this boat here. I've got this boat. Let me grab a bigger brush so you can see it easier. So that's sample source one. Now I go into sample source two. Let me grab this boat. So we've got that one. Let's go sample source three. Let's grab this boat so we can see that. Now if I go back to one, notice there's the first one, two, there's the second one, third one there. So where would that be useful? It, it has some uses in retouching photographs, but really that's designed for video. Because when you're cloning certain areas, you don't want to have to scrub backwards and forwards in the video all the time to do that. So you can actually do the cloning directly on the video frames uh, by doing it that way. And then the frame offset is actually, you know, how many frames back do you want to be working? So you can go in a frame, then you move forward a frame, and then it will start to sample um, one more frame. So you move forward three frames, the sample will move forward three frames, for example. So then that way you can clone stamp for movement and um, and it's quite useful but for working with photographs you're not going to be using the frame offset and probably not using those although you can if you want but um, you know I'll leave that entirely up to you now when it comes to these samples here when we're creating a sample sometimes we're over there you know like for example here and we're trying to line it up or here's a better example we're grabbing this bit and it's looking good but then it gets a little weird because the angle is different well we can change the angle here and then if we do that, notice that that angle will now change and it will line up better. Um, and that's because we can change it. So let me just, um, actually before I do that, hit another option there, reset that offset. And then you can rotate the picture. And notice that that picture is going to pretty much rotate based on you know where we're, where we're going from. And you can kind of see that. Now the overlay is the only thing that's actually rotating. The photo itself isn't. So what you're doing is getting a preview of the angle that brush will be at. See that? And if we go this way, the brush will go the other way. So you can hit that button there to reset it. So that's a very useful thing. But sometimes also, you know, we've got this normal blend mode. Sometimes you can go to light, light nor darken. And what it does is it's just showing you your overlay here. So sometimes it makes it easier right now. You know, we're in the light mode and we can see that light in part without so much distraction. Because if we're here, see there's a lot of distraction there. We go to the light and we can actually just see our lighter area. Or if we're working with a dark area here, let's grab our sample here. We change this to darken, gets rid of the light areas, helps us to see what we're working with. And then of course there's the difference mode.
Now, difference mode is not a special effects mode. Difference mode is a mode that we use for perfectly lining things up because when they're perfectly lined up, they become solid black, like there. So that helps you to align things more perfectly. So maybe we're working on some of these angles and you want to get a perfect alignment. You can see it there with the difference mode. You can also change the opacity, you know, so we can fade that out a little bit on our overlay. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the scaling. I'm just going to make sure I've just got everything reset right now. And I'm just going to grab a, grab a sample here. So here's the thing. If I want to clone stamp this boat off into the background, it's not very natural right now. And the reason for that is because as things go away, the, the size changes. So even if you're um, clones, cloning on angles and there's a little bit of perspective like that, like there is in the real world, it's going to get start to mismatch. So what you can do is you can change the scaling. So if we drop the scaling down here, and now we paint, notice that that one's going to become smaller. And then if I sample this one and then paint another one, that's going to become smaller, and so on and so forth. So now you can start to um, simulate sizes and distance by using the scaling. Now the other thing is, um, not everything is always going to be even, so you can turn this tool off and you can make the width and the height difference, you can actually change that aspect ratio, or you can lock it in there and keep it uh, in proportion. So those are the different options that are available to you um, using the clone stamp. So you can see there's some great um, options available. And here we go right now, we've got that before and after. And really the clone stamp is, it's the workhorse when it comes to retouching. So if you're going to be doing any amount of retouching, you want to really master this clone stamp tool because it will be your best friend.